Diane Gold is 102 years old and she has lived through two world wars. Hello great grandma and welcome and thank you for coming and um, can you introduce yourself? My name is Diana Gould and I am great grandmother to Talia Anshel. I was born in 1912 in Poland in Lodz and my mother and father brought me to London where my father got a flat in Shoreditch. They were foreigners, so they had to do war work. They actually made airplanes, oh. or parts of. I was two when the First World War broke out. A policeman used to go by, pedal by, and blow a whistle, because they didn't have a lot of sirens. That was, I remember that very clearly. When the war started, I was 27. My husband was a fireman and they were very barely equipped to fight fires so early in the war. It gradually they got more and more equipment and then when the bombing started on, in London it was really very difficult. My husband was in a lot of the wars on Oxford Street when John Lewis and that had bombed. He said he used to, I used to see him sometimes if he got a few hours leave. When I had time, I'd go to Marmay Mission Hospital, which was just five minutes up the road, help roll bandages, any jobs they wanted done. And I could, because remember I had a little boy. I had to have him look after him. Were you evacuated during the Second World War? I was evacuated, really, I, with Brian, who was my little son at that time. I, he, I'd say he was about two, three, and we went to Watford, and we stayed there for about two weeks. But I wanted to come back to be we were great grandpa was, so I came back to London. But after a while the bombing started and it was a bit a bit hairy, it was a bit difficult. And then a bomb fell near us in Stoke Newington. So I went down to Shoreditch to my mother's place, your great great your great great grandmother and stay with her and we had a bomb at my mother's just across the road and it was tremendous. Every piece of glass in the flat broke. Uh, in fact, my husband had shifted, my father was a cabinet maker and he'd made my mother a six foot six wardrobe besides other things. And he'd half shifted it in front of a window. That really saved our lives because the bombs were coming down. You count them one, two, and they're getting nearer. When it came to five, this is ours. And in fact, it slipped down the next block. And we and the wardrobe did that. It shook and it split across the back. And in fact. My son, Brian, still has that wardrobe with a lump of wood nailed onto the back. It really saved our lives. But, and of course there was rationing. We only allowed so much butter and so much eggs. We had to put up with it. Sometimes we didn't have gas or water or electricity. So we got pretty dirty sometimes. But. That's how it is, we've got to cope with it. But then we had, during the war, we had what we called a blackout. We weren't allowed to have any light showing into the street. So we had blankets up at the windows. You know, you couldn't have, if you lit a match out in the street, it would be like a beacon. This is my husband, on the left here, is a picture of my husband in his uniform in the war. And the picture on the right 
is my mother on her hundredth birthday. What was the saddest thing that happened to you when the, when the war happened? Well, the saddest things that happened to me, my father died during the bombing. Which moment in the war did you enjoy the most? When I heard that my husband was alive and safe because he was reported missing in the fires. He's gone to one of the big fires and they couldn't find him. They found him eventually and he was okay. That was my best moment in the war. If, if you'd learn anything from the war? If I learned anything from the war, please God, we don't have any more wars because I don't think wars settle anything. I've done a lot of travelling on my own around the world and you learn people are the same all the world over. Only their languages are different. You have respect in yourself so you'll respect your elders.